the votes are in it's time for another tier list this week y'all voted for weapons and their abilities so i have color coded them tabulated them made them gridified all pretty like and it's time to start talking about the weapons and abilities of the last spell the way I'm going to do this is I am going to approach each weapon, rate each of its individual skills first, and then I will give the weapon an overall rating. But before we do that, I want to do my standard disclaimer, which is tier lists are bad, kind of. Uh, even in the case of something like weapons, I think that there is a lot of subjectivity and there's a lot of situational value to different weapons. Certain weapons pair well with one another, etc. So don't take this as rote. What I am describing here is my personal opinion on the power level and efficacy of these weapons, and you should obviously take that with a grain of salt. The true value of tier lists is that when I put one of these out, I get lots of people in the comments telling me why I am wrong and the things that I am missing out on. I then have an opportunity to go and experiment with those things and figure out if the person was full of it or they knew what they were talking about. So. Let's go through all the weapons and abilities, and uh, let's see what we come up with. So the first weapon we have here is the one-handed axe, and its first ability is Shred. So Shred is an ability that I really like for a couple of reasons. First of all, the opportunism multiplier is very generous at 1.35x. And also, it has a 5 use per turns on it, and hits 3 enemies. All of that for 1 AP makes this feel like a solidly A tier ability. It doesn't quite crack into S tier, I think because of the limitation of it being melee range only. Uh, and also, the inaccuracy can be a little frustrating early game before you get your engine going. The next ability that we're going to be looking at is Intimidating Scream. And Intimidating Scream is an interesting one. I really like it because it is an enabler for the opportunism on Shred. It's a debuff, it has vision on it, it debuffs damage, which I don't think is particularly important, but it does hit six targets, which means that for one AP, you're potentially enabling two full Shreds on enemies, and especially early game, that's going to knock out both those sets of enemies. That being said, I think Intimidating Scream on its own is not particularly strong and is only really valuable in concert with Shred. So for that reason, I think I'm going to give Intimidating Scream a C tier. It's, it's good without being transformative. It's not an ability that I'm going to use with any frequency or regularity, unless I'm enabling Shred. Then the last ability for the Axe is Axe Boomerang. Uh, axe Boomerang comes with a pretty healthy damage bonus above the base damage. I should mention this before we go too much further. All of these abilities are taken from the Tier 0 version of the weapons without them being equipped on a character, so there is no additional damage modification. So this is the bog standard damage for each of these abilities. Axe Boomerang hits in the mustache pattern, for lack of a better way. I think uh, Mumbo Jumbo from the Minecraft world might get a kick out of that. But it, uh, it, does, it is range modifiable. It hits seven targets, which is pretty generous, and it can be used twice a turn. I think that Axe Boomerang is good. Its real deficit is just in its mana cost. I don't find myself wanting to use it too frequently. So that is our Axe abilities. And I think overall, when I think about the kit of the axe, I'm going to put it solidly in B tier. And I'm going to put all of the weapons far left, and I'll put all of the abilities to the right. I will do some in tier ranking as well as we go. But I think Shred is a great standout, but the axe suffers from a problem that a lot of melee weapons have, which is that simply put, it lacks a bit of flexibility. It does great damage when you're in the thick of things doing a lot of damage, but you can't always be in the thick of things. You can't always utilize the mobility to get where you need to go. So it's a bit limited in that regard. 
But that covers the axe, so let's start talking about the crossbow. The crossbow is an interesting one. Uh, I have a bit of ambivalence about it. Uh, it has a relatively high base damage, which is really nice, and then Straight Shot has a pretty healthy range, although the inaccuracy on it builds pretty quickly, and it has four uses per turn. I think I put uh, Straight Shot in the B tier because it just, you know, it is, it is a good bog standard damage ability. It doesn't have a lot of other things going for it, and it isn't hitting quite hard enough from my perspective to fully justify the, the, crossbows, uh, the crossbows value. I also want to say all weapons are viable. So if something ends up in C tier or D tier, that doesn't mean that it is, it is without value. So then we have Heavy Bolt. Heavy Bolt I actually like a lot on the crossbow. If you get moving around, despite the fact that it's a orthogonally limited attack, it can only attack on straight lines, it has good damage, it hits staggeringly hard, and uh, the inaccuracy feels a lot less impactful there, and it's unblockable. So for that reason, I actually think this is my favorite piece of the crossbow's kit. I think it can be really good early game for taking out early enemies that are a little tankier and challenging to get rid of. I'm thinking like splitters, etc. Next up, we have Impaling Bolt. I think I sleep on Impaling Bolt a little more than I should. The one AP cost of this ability is pretty darn solid. Uh, its range is 3 to 10, which is very healthy. Doesn't suffer from any inaccuracy. And then it can hit up to four targets with armor piercing. That means that if you get that nice lineup of, say, armored units, you can do some real devastation. Because of the two mana cost, I don't think it cracks into A tier, but I do think that it's, it's down here happily in B tier. And then last but not least, we have Explosive Bolt. This is a pretty high damage, 2 AP, 3 mana attack. It has a range of up to 10, hits up to 5 targets in that nice plus symbol, which is, uh, we like the plus symbol. Um, I think, I think again, this lands in B tier. It doesn't, it doesn't crack up into that A tier. It doesn't really solve a problem that I'm looking to solve. And at 3 mana, there are a lot of abilities that do better work. So now we've come to the point to judge the crossbow overall, and this may be a little surprising, but I think the crossbow is going to go into C tier. And the reason, despite all of its abilities being better than that, is that it lacks a standout ability. I think heavy shot is good, but at two uses it's relatively limited and as a result makes it a real challenge to kind of utilize. So I think the crossbow's in a tough place. It needs a little more utility. Its raw damage isn't quite there to be able to kind of like carry it into the higher echelons. The dagger. So first we have backstab, which has one of the highest isolation modifiers at 1.75x. As a reminder for new players, isolation affects all abilities when a target is isolated, but an isolation modifier is a multiplier on your isolation modifier. So if you have 50%, well, that's going to be hard. If you have 100% isolation, which would be very, uh, very impressive, this is going to make it 175%. With a modest base damage, backstab still does a lot of work if you are getting isolated targets. And again, at the five uses per turn, I think this is a really solid ability that is just held back ever so slightly by the fact that it is melee range only. So I'm going to put it here at the top of B tier. I think it is strong, but it doesn't quite crack that A tier from my perspective. Then next up, we have Throwing Dagger, which is range modifiable, has a very high base damage compared to the overall damage of the dagger. It is unblockable, costs one, and it is limit two per turn. Again, I think this, it struggles a little bit. So 
because of the limited uses per turn, I'm going to put it in B tier. It doesn't hit quite hard enough. It's a very nice piece of the kit of the dagger. And actually, I mean, just because it is ranged and it gives you that flexibility, I'm tempted to put it in A tier. I think it's I think it's pretty strong. And for your, your vampires or your blood mages, it can be really nice. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll edge it up, but it's at the bottom of A tier. It's kind of living in that limbo. And then last but not least, you have Poison Daggers. Uh, it is two actions, three mana. Also has range modifiability. Can be used twice per turn. Applies 30 poison and has a base multi-hit of four. I think this is our first S tier. Uh, poison Daggers is very strong. You can do a lot of insane things with Dagger multi-hit. Dagger multi-hit plays super well with Epidemic. You start to get those multi-hits up. You get your poison modifier up and you can be doing crazy amounts of poison killing everything. So where does that leave us for the overall value of the dagger. I don't think the dagger cracks into S tier. I think it lives firmly as our first A tier weapon. It is good, but it it needs a bit of love to really ascend to the next level. But now we move on to the druid staff. So centipedes is a four use per turn. Used to be three. It's nice that it got improved. Up to range nine, single target, average damage, a high opportunism multiplier attack. I really like centipedes. I think it does surprisingly good damage on isol on uh, opportunismed targets, and is just pretty darn flexible. So I like I like putting it somewhere in the middle of A tier. It's not a real standout, but I would say it's better than throwing dagger just because of the number of times it can be used. Then we have Entangle, which for two mana is a snare for up to nine targets. Also comes with a nice uh, debuff if you're playing an opportunism build and can be used twice per turn. So you're potentially debuffing up to six. This is the second best snare in the game. And snares can be really valuable if you are fighting bulkies or twisted that you can't quite get down. Twisted obviously have their immune thing going on, so they are not without their own challenges. But I really, really like Entangle, and I think it's, it's top of B tier just because it's not doing damage. Then we have Acid Spray. They keep buffing Acid Spray, and I keep not using Acid Spray. So it is a long range... Uh, 13 targets, 2 uses per turn, uh, strips away 150 armor and 10% dodge for 2 mana. I might use this if they dropped the mana requirement on it, but I think it firmly is in D tier. So I'm going to put it down there. Then we have what will come as a surprise to no one. We have Bee Sting. 5 bounces, 30 poison, range 9, uh, two uses per turn. Bees is firmly up there in S tier above daggers. It is insanely strong. Uh, then we have the overall rating for the druid staff, and I think it will come as a surprise to no one that I think a druid staff for a properly arrayed hero is transformative, insane, amazing, and we love it. So then... We move on to the Great Axe. The Great Axe's first ability is Swing, which is an inaccurate, five across, three uses per turn, two AP, melee range only attack with a relatively wide damage spectrum. Uh, it can get going. This, this attack can do some damage. It is sometimes really hard to find a row of five enemies. You need a lot of mobility to get around and do it. At the 2 AP cost, I think that this is not the ability you're taking the Great Axe for. I think it lives in the C tier. Probably below Intimidating Scream, if I'm being honest. Then we have Leap. Uh, has a nice damage multiplier, is orthogonal, but is skill range improvable. Has a snare on the enemies that you land next to and can be used twice per turn. This is a great mobility ability, and I think lives firmly in like mid to low 
A tier. Fantastic for getting around. The fact that it costs a movement can sometimes be a little limiting, but I think overall it's pretty darn solid. Then we have Berserker Rage. Uh, it has a bit of range. It is a buff. It costs one mana and one AP, and the buff does scale based on the level of the uh, the axe. And it has a two turn limit that can be buffed by Blessing. I think Berserker Rage is a very good ability to the point where I think it lives in S tier. Uh, Though I don't think the rest of the Axe's kit necessarily always justifies its value. But you can start rolling an insane amount of damage with Berserker Rage, and the resistance debuff is relatively minor. The fact that you can use it on others is also very interesting. And then we end with Super Spin, which I believe is the only attack whose range is self a uh, fun bit of trivia but it hits 12 targets relatively high damage one use per turn i think i'm going to ruffle some feathers with this one because i am going to put super spin down here in high b tier and the reason is because you have to get into the middle and the primary way you're going to be getting into the middle is through leap you are never going to get the full 12 folks right you're you're gonna miss one because you're gonna leap in and you're probably going to kill the one that you leap towards it is also hard to get into the middle of this you need to spend your second leap to get back out again more than likely so your total investment here is probably four ap two movement three mana and what you're getting out of it is probably 10 targets killed, maybe even less. So overall, I don't think that Super Spin does as much work as sometimes people give it credit. It's certainly a fun ability, it's a neat ability, but I think it, it struggles a bit. So the redemption for the two-handed axe is Berserker Rage. The rest of its kit I find pretty mediocre, and so I think I'm going to put it down in C tier. I'll put it above hand uh, above regular crossbow not hand crossbow but it's not a it's not a weapon that i'm particularly excited to see people who have watched me on stream will not be surprised by this it is uh it is good not great so now on to the one-handed hammer and i should take a moment here to apologize there's going to be some continuity issues just because my voice is going because i'm a little under the weather but the core of the one-handed hammers co uh kit is an unblockable melee range five uses per turn hit that is surprisingly hard hitting i think that bash is limited by the melee range its unblockable nature is kind of nice but i think it lives somewhere in b tier below backstab which i put super spin here spin to win i'm gonna i'm gonna downgrade that a little bit i would much rather have entangle or backstab uh it's probably above that and that's about that there we go so yeah so i'll put bash somewhere down here it's b tier i think it it needs some more love it does hit surprisingly hard but it's it's pretty hard to justify taking an axe just for that then we have crush which is skill range modifiable has a decent damage range hits two targets limit uh two uses per turn and has a 1.3 opportunism modifier which is slightly less than shred on the axe uh and because it's only two uses per turn it struggles a bit but i think it lives in a tier probably somewhere down here it can hit staggeringly hard with the right build for sure and then last but not least is stomp which is single target high damage has a lot of stun, carries the highest stun percentage of any attack in the game. Uh, but at a cost of 2 AP and 2 mana, the splash damage plus other damage makes it a little difficult. It doesn't provide any mobility, so you're not going to be able to get in or out with the axe kind of standalone. I don't particularly like this ability. I'm going to put it in B tier. And unfortunately, that means that the hammer, from my perspective, is very low c tier it may actually be our first d tier i think it struggles a little too much it's so far outclassed by the axe in terms of if you want to do opportunism damage that it's just uh it's just unfortunately not even in the running now on to the hand crossbow 
So the hand crossbow's primary ability is quick shot. It's multi-hit two, it's armor piercing, it is very low damage, has a range of up to six, uh, and it is can be used four times per turn. Quickshot is insane. A no mana multi-hit attack is bonkers. Uh, it's going to go right up there at the top of S tier, and there, I have no hesitation uh, with that. So the the only thing that I will say here about Quickshot is I think the tuning that they should do on it is they should just make it multi-hit 1x. So you have to start getting some multi-hit gear to make it work because a no-cost multi-hit attack that is armor-piercing, it just it shreds waves, absolutely. Then we have Slow Death. Uh, slow Death is a bit of a sleeper. Its poison, I think, is pretty inconsequential. It is, I think, the highest base poison you can get on an ability. Uh, but the minus two movement is really where this one sings. It's just a nice rounding out of the kit for the hand crossbow because you can obliterate all of the cannon fodder enemies and then snare up the stuff that survives your barrage. I think that that being said, it lives in B tier. It's... I think it's it's up there with Entangle for like has good utility, is valuable. And then third, but not least, is Blaze, uh, which has recently been redone several times. Uh, it's now three Propagation Bounces for one AP and two mana. It does moderately high damage, especially for the Hand Crossbow, has a range of up to six, and can be used three times. I think Blaze is still very strong. You do have to itemize towards Propagation Bounces and Propagation Damage to make it work, but I think it's it's low A tier just because it can be used up to three times. If you can get the Mana Engine to support it, that can be a lot of damage. The Hand Crossbow, unsurprisingly, is going to join the Druid Staff in S tier. It is just staggeringly powerful. When you get a Crit Master build with Hand Crossbow going, the, uh, the world is your oyster. The Longbow. So the Longbow's first ability is Longshot. It is the longest attack in the game. It does uh, slightly above average damage, uh, and it hits one target and has a relatively low isolation modifier compared to something like the Dagger. I think this is a good, not great, going to put it somewhere in this middle area like I think it's about on par with the crossbow shot about on par with backstab it's it's a fine ability it's good if you're doing a floors lava run in Glenwall <laughs> then we have watch out watch out the dodge buff that it gives scales with the level of the weapon that you're using has a range of 14 targets one Unit, this can really bail you out of a lot of situations. 30 dodge is a lot to be able to pick up, and so I think it is, it's fine. It's good, it's it's better than a lot of, than some of these other ones. I think it's probably on par with Impaling Bolt. Somewhere in that B tier range. It's, uh, it's one of those things where I will always choose to kill an enemy that threatens me over uh, tossing out some dodge. And yeah, actually, for that reason, I think it lives more like in the Intimidating Scream range. It's good, not great, but if you can kill to protect, it's better than that. And then we have Snipe Shot. Uh, very high damage, undodgeable, costs movement, mana, and an action point. Uh, can be used twice. Uh, doesn't have an isolation modifier on it, which sometimes makes it a little awkward because that's primarily what you're using it for. You want to take out some big unit, I think it probably lives somewhere down here. I don't use it too frequently. It's certainly not like the bread and butter of the bow, but it's uh, it's decent. Decent, not great. Then we have Arctic Blast. Arctic Blast is low damage, good range, uh, hits up to nine targets, has the second highest stun percentage in the game, and is reasonably affordable at two action points, two mana. I think this is the standout ability for the longbow, and I think it lives somewhere down here. Blaze, you deserve to be much higher up on this list. Blaze is, is low, uh, is more like mid to high A tier from my perspective. It's definitely above centipedes. 
So yeah, so that asks that begs the question: what uh, what do we think of the longbow now that we have now that we have put everything in its place? And I think the answer is that the longbow lives above the great axe, but doesn't quite crack into the higher tiers. It's a uh, it's an okay weapon to start out with. It's an okay weapon to play around with for a moment, but it just uh, it just struggles in the late game because it doesn't have the capacity to provide isolated targets for itself because it doesn't hit hard enough on non-isolated targets. The Magic Orb. Uh, the Magic Orb's first ability is Infect, which is a five uses per turn. You know how I feel about five uses per turn. Has a range of up to eight, has a really nice isolation bonus associated with it, but relatively low damage. I really like Infect. I think it, I think it lives very high in A tier, just because of the five uses, it it makes the magic orb feel like a really good like cleanup weapon to pair with, say, a druid staff. Putrid Ball is doing a little bit of damage to a primary target and then a bunch of poison to everybody around it and that unit. Uh, by a bunch, I mean 30 poison. It's a little longer duration than some of the other ones at four and can be used twice, but I think Putrid Ball is pretty lackluster living down in C tier. Um, it doesn't, it's not a, a ability that I gravitate towards with any uh, frequency or regularity. And then last but not least, we have Death Ray. Uh, Death Ray is eight in a straight line, orthogonal attack, skill range modifiable, high damage, very expensive from a mana perspective. The the mana cost here gives me a bit of pause. I think it's it's a fun ability, it does good work, but I think it lives like at the bottom of A tier. I I only break it out very occasionally. It's not uh it's not really worth writing home about. Now, with that being said, I think the two abilities that work well for the magic orb Put it in a good but not great place. I'm between A and B tier on it, and I think I'm gonna give it uh, give it a B tier. Um, I think it it doesn't quite make it into the A tier because it's not really you can't build a run around uh, around it or build a build around it. Uh, it's not kind of that defining element. The pistol is a very interesting weapon. Uh, if you've watched any of my live streams, you know that I'm like super happy about the rework of Pistol. But Pistol Shot, as the first ability, is unblockable momentum 20%. It's a average middle-of-the-road momentum modifier. Uh, you have relatively low range, but you get four momentum shots out of Pistol. I think Pistol Shot is, is very, very solid. Lives up in the top echelon of primary attacks along with Infect and Shred. And it's just pretty strong. The unblockable is just kind of icing on the cake. Then we have Grappling Shot, which is surprisingly high damage mod, uh, orthogonal skill range modifiable, and it has follow on it. So it's how you're going to build up your momentum, presumably. I think one of the things, one of the reasons I really like the pistol is I think that it that both of these abilities kind of like live right in the same space for me. I love Grappling Shot. I can usually enable it. Helps me to get across the map, get where I'm going. It is a solid movement ability. Uh, and, and the isolation is just kind of icing on the cake. It makes it that much easier to bounce around the map. Then we have Grape Shot. 2 AP, 4 mana, decent damage, uh, skill range modifiable, orthogonal, 9 targets, undodgeable. I don't use Grape Shot a lot on heroes. It occasionally gets broken out. It's kind of okay. It's probably like top of C tier for me. Not a not going to move the needle too terribly much. And then overall, the pistol for me lives firmly in A tier, I think. I think it is it's up there with the dagger. It's if you're building a momentum build, the pistol is one of the weapons that I am happiest to see and utilize. There are also some varietals of the pistol that come with particularly nice modifiers. I think it's it's a well-rounded weapon overall. The power staff. So first up, we have Pillar of Light. 
high damage, decent range, uh, hits one target relatively hard, debuffs a whole circle around it, uh, limits per, per turn four. So this is, in my opinion, the best single attack for enabling opportunism on a hero. I think Pillar of Light is sleeper amazing. It hits really hard. It does really good work. I'm actually going to put it at the bottom of S tier. I think it is, I think it is that strong. Uh, it, it, just, it just does so much work. I am so consistently impressed by it. Uh, and the accuracy debuff is nice without being game-changing. It's really just there for opportunism enabling. Then we have Stunning Entrance. Uh, the, the triple threat of 1 AP, 1 mana, 1 movement. Has a range of up to 8, which is skill modifiable. Drops a stun at a relatively high percentage. Grants vision and follow. Stunning Entrance is also exceptional. Uh, Stunning Entrance is going to live in, like, the Blaze range. Uh, this is one of the best movement abilities. The fact that it has vision on it just makes it so, so flexible. You can do so much with it in terms of getting around, especially with, like, an opportunist. You're very likely to get kills if you can drop Contagion as well. Has a lot of really good stuff going on. And that brings us to Scorching Wave. Oh gosh, the Power Staff kit is just so good. So moderate damage, uh, also range modifiable, hits six targets with a huge opportunism multiplier of 2x for 2 AP and 2 mana. It's just, it's just great. Uh, it used to be better before the contamination changes, but I put it like high A tier. Like it's really good. Look at this. The Power Staff has three in the A and S tier. That, that should tell you something about, about the Power Staff. Uh, and then we finish up with Fire Thrower. Big damage, costs a bunch. Uh, not a skill that I use with much regularity, but can be handy once in a while. I think I put it in C tier. Don't, don't love it. Probably right around Grape Shop Blast. I'm like, why? I don't really use these abilities. Um, and then, oops, before we go to Rifle Shot, I have jumped the gun. We need to uh, we need to actually rank power staff now. With how good everything is up there, you might expect S tier, and I think that is the direction that I am leaning. The only thing that is whole, and I mean it, it really is because it it does so much work. It enables opportunism builds very uniquely. I think it lives at the bottom of S tier. It is also a very strong A tier contender, but it is it is very solid. Now we can move on to the rifle. Oh, the rifle. Okay, so first of all, we have an undodgeable 2 AP high damage attack that goes up to range 12 that can be used three times per turn. Very underwhelming, lives in the same category as the primary attack for the Great Axe. It's, it's just not good. It's really hard to utilize, not very valuable. Hipshot, on the other hand, has some value to it. The inaccuracy is painful. But the opportunism mod is quite nice, and it is a cheap attack. We like that. I think I put it down in like the dagger throw neighborhood somewhere down here. It's uh, it doesn't quite crack into S tier, but it is nice. It can pair well with other debuffing weapons early on. But I think there are better opportunism sources that have nicer opportunism multipliers associated with them. Suppressive fire is uh, interesting. 10 targets for 2 mana uh, with a big slow and a big accuracy debuff. Doesn't do much in the way of damage. This is the best wave delay ability in the game. Uh, it's, it's really strong. It's very flexible. I, I like it. I think that it is, it, it is better than Entangle by enough that I put it kind of like up here in mid A tier. And if the rest of the kit of the rifle was a little stronger, I think that would really be beneficial for the rifle. But it's a good ability. The accuracy is interesting, uh, as, as is the minus move. It's primarily the minus move, though. And then last but not least, we have Assassinate. Huge damage, uh, but pretty big cost at 2 AP, 2 mana, and 2 movement. Has a decent range. Isolation of 1.5x, no block. Uh, the limit of one per turn is hard. I think that for me puts it like high B tier. It is nice to have it for taking out those isolated enemies, but it doesn't really 
uh, it doesn't really get there in my eyes. The if, it, if you use multiple times per turn, maybe, but it's a little too expensive to be spamming all over the place. Overall, as much as I like suppressive fire, I'm almost always looking to replace my rifles with other things. I think it lives down here in D tier from my perspective. Uh, still very usable. Every one of these weapons is very usable. You can use them in runs, but it just it doesn't quite crack that upper echelon. And situationally, I'll use it to kind of like delay in the early game. It's Scepter time. So we have Magic Bash. So the Scepter is interesting for a couple reasons. So the 30% momentum is the highest momentum modifier. The Magic Damage has uh, Resistance Reduction built into it, which is quite nice. And now it is range modifiable and can be used five times per turn. I think Magic Bash, as far as momentum abilities, is, is the GOAT. I think it is S tier. Very strong, does a lot of damage. Many of the biggest hits I've ever gotten have been with Magic Bash. Then we have Windwalk. It's nice to have a way to get some movement back, to recover some movement. I think that it doesn't quite live in A tier, though. It lives somewhere down here, probably like around the same place that Super Spin does in my eyes. Uh, good without being exceptional. And then we have Hammer of Faith, which is a stun propagate with a decent stun chance, has range associated with it for three mana. And you can use it twice per turn. I think that uh, I don't use Hammer of Faith much, but I think that it is sleeper in the same category as like Death Ray. It's like bottom of A tier, it's good, it's slightly above B tier. You can get some good work out of it. It, though, does not align with the identity of the heroes that are generally using a scepter. And for that, I think it actually drops down to top of B tier because you don't want to be picking up stun on a momentum hero. It's You're, you're cannibalizing uh, momentum opportunity for stun. So I, I don't think it quite works. The, the scepter overall, I think live solidly in A tier as a slightly better momentum weapon than the pistol. But I love Pistol Scepter. I think it's a great combo. Uh, very, very solid. Short Bow. Straight Arrow got, uh, got the business. Still has four uses. Still has nine range. Uh, ha only costs one AP, but it doesn't have the no dodge modifier that it previously did which to me puts it down here with the crossbow shot. Longbow, crossbow, shortbow all suffer from kind of the same lackluster primary attack. Uh, power shot is orthogonal only, but does big damage, kind of lives in the same world for me as heavy, uh, heavy bolt. Power shot is kind of the same animal, uh, perhaps slightly more flexible, so I might put it here, but I won't put it above the pistol shot's primary. So it's an A tier because I like the, the heavy hitting aspect of it. Next on the list is Tight Volley. Does pretty decent damage. 2 AP, 2 mana. Same range as its predecessor. Hits 6 targets and is a lesser snare, but comes with a lot more damage. So I think for me, it, it lives slightly above Entangle, uh, slightly above Arctic Blast, probably like in the hip shot neighborhood. Like I like tight volley. I think it's quite solid. But definitely the standout ability of the short bow from my perspective is rain of arrows. Hits like an absolute uh, truck full of bricks. Uh, has the same range. Hits seven targets in a pattern that I find very easy to reproduce throughout the game. So I really like rain of arrows. And I think I put it way up here in S tier. Like, I think it's that strong. For four mana, this pattern, it's really, really good. Which then begs the question, where does the short bow live? I think the short bow lives in B tier. It, it just, it lacks synergy with the kinds of builds that I, that I run, perhaps. Um, and I think it is below, it is below the axe axe. Despite having that one standout ability, and this, its its primary attack really holds it back. I think that's the issue. 
Yeah, well, I'm realizing now that I put it in B tier, but I put nearly all of its abilities in A tier. I think it's I think it's just the lack of kind of explosiveness on it. That's interesting though. I'm I'm kind of like second guessing myself, but I, I think it lives in B tier. I don't think it quite I, I think it's the limit the limit on power shots. The the fact that tight vo volley and reign of arrows are both mana hogs just, just makes it a little hard to hard to justify. Then there's the sledgehammer. Sledgehammer is a rare two-hander that I think is bomb. Uh, it does a ton of damage for one AP. You could take notes, two-handed sword, uh, spear, and uh, great axe. It is range modifiable, and it hits one target and stuns eight around it. The stun percent, percent chance is relatively low, but Hammer Strike is a very strong... Uh, very strong attack like maybe bottom of s tier strong because the stun can be quite reliable if you get some stun percentage and it's just overall pretty solid uh because it's doing a ton of damage i i had an opportunist that was hitting for like nearly 3k with a hammer strike uh in a in a recent run then we have follow-up. Uh, whoever decided to give opportunism to follow-up is, uh, is a saint. Uh, it is amazing. It is also range modifiable, gets utilized twice per turn, and is just so good for the mobility of the hammer. And so I think it lives, it lives below stunning entrance, but I think above, above centipedes. Uh, solidly in A tier. Uh, very, very good ability. Mega Stomp, Propagate 5, does a lot of damage, 2 AP, 2 mana, 5 jumps, and uh, also does a damage debuff. I just, I don't, I don't see it. I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's particularly strong. You almost always have better ways to spend your AP. I rarely use this ability. Uh, for bosses, there might be some argument, but overall, I think it's, uh, it's not quite not quite where it needs to be. Maybe if there are two bulkies next to each other, I could see it being useful, but it's it's very deeply situational. And then we have ground slam, ground smash, excuse me. Uh, big damage, range modifiable, hits targets in a plus symbol, cannot be dodged. I uh, I like this. I think it lives like somewhere top of B tier, or maybe low A tier type of thing. It's good, but not uh not game changing from my perspective. Three three mana cost is reasonable for how much damage you are putting out with it. I jumped the gun again, but the hammer I think is going to live in A tier, and I think it's going to be above the pistol, below the uh, the scepter. When properly utilized, the hammer can be a wave decimator coupled with a wave delayer. Very, very strong. Now we move on to the spear. Impale. Hits three enemies for two uh, AP. Costs, uh, costs a fair amount for what you get, and you only get three uses. I think Impale is, with no modifiers, is, is living down here in, in the D tier. Doesn't, doesn't generate any excitement in me uh i mean uh, I'll, I'll put it i'll put it down here I, i'm more excited to use impale than i am to use rifle shot as a single target then there's rush which at least has momentum associated with it, it is the only multi-target momentum attack but it is melee range limited uh and cost two and can only be used twice per turn which to me it lives in the same same exact place of I'm rarely excited to use Rush, although it can be good damage for taking out uh, bulkies, Twisted, etc. And there's Flurious Strikes. Uh, great ability. Amazing on Blood Mages. Amazing when you can kind of like do it. Uh, a multi-hit ability with two, for two mana and two AP. The two AP hurts it a little bit, but it is undodgeable. I think this lives uh, firmly in high A tier. 
Like maybe up with Scorching Wave, actually. I, I think that this is the best ability on the spear. And in second place is Triple Swipe, which just hits really hard, hits in a cone. I like it more than uh, Grape Shot or uh, Fire Thrower, which are down here in C tier. But it doesn't, I don't think it breaks out of out of B tier, but I like it. Um, and it, it gets out there. And then the Spear, just for its synergy with Blood Mages, I think lives at the bottom of B tier, just slightly eking out the Longbow. That might be a surprise to some, because I'm not a huge Spear advocate. But I think there's... Uh, there's certain builds where the spear really sings, and that that matters a lot to me. All right, the sword. First, we have slice. Uh, great momentum scaling has follow through. We've talked about the sword before. It's kind of like your your best friend if you need to get around. I think slice is quite a strong ability and lives up here with uh, with pistol shot. Same general vicinity. Its base damage is low, the momentum makes up for it, four uses per turn makes it feel pretty good. Then there's dash. Uh, the fact that this is skill range modifiable is probably the thing that elevates it most. Also, it hits surprisingly hard. I generally think of dash and slice as living in kind of the same space. I really like dash, though. The mobility that it provides almost maybe pushes it up even a little higher into like sh above shred and infect territory. It's really good as a maneuver. Um, with skill range, it becomes kind of bonkers. And then Blade Rush. Again, it's nice. It hits relatively hard. It has that maneuver tag. The two mana cost on it is a little disappointing. So I think I put it down here, maybe just above Hammer of Faith. Overall, though, the the sword I like I think it is it's it lives in this category of like there are better momentum weapons that I like more but it's you know it's it's good enough tome of secrets we have we have made it to the controversial boy so first we have shadow bolt uh, seventy to one hundred and ten lo nice long range on it. Uh, one target, four uses per turn. Hits pretty hard. I, I gotta give it credit. It uh, it does good work, and I think that it lives like in Centipedeville down here. Like it's it's good. It's not it's not a standout by any stretch of the imagination. Then we have weakening touch. The the thing about weakening touch that is the core of its value is this resistance mod. Uh, negative resistance is capped, so you're not going to get insane numbers out of this, but it bounces around a lot. It generates some minus resistance, some minus damage. Uh, it is a little expensive at 2 AP. I know people swear by weakening touch. They're like weakening touch first, lightning second, life will be good, but it is... Any propagate attack is relatively unpredictable. You can certainly use it to ping pong between two high value targets, stack up a lot of resistance, hit a lot harder in the future. But I think that its cost just holds it back a little bit. And for me, puts it like low A tier, high B tier. I'll put it, I'll put it with Death Ray. Uh it's it's a it's a good ability, but it is not uh it is not quite as game-changing as, as I hoped it would be because of the negative cap on, uh, on debuffing. But I see a lot more value in it than some of the other debuffs. Uh, cough, cough, acid spray. Sorry. Then we have Fireball. Uh, I think Fireball is basically just the same as Ground Slam. It lives like high B tier. It's a little expensive mana-wise, so maybe I actually like drop it down here i think it's below maybe it's in like assassinateville i'll put it there relatively high damage does have armor piercing which is nice um one use per turn makes it a little hard to utilize and then lightning strike the granddaddy of propagation damage this is a great ability if you can get this firing off fully you can do some serious work i think it lives up here in the upper echelon of abilities that can do insane wave clear 
So overall, the tome. I, I'm going to ruffle some feathers with this one, but I think uh, I, I still put it in high B tier. I think it is good without without cresting into that like game changing top echelon. Uh, it it struggles a little. It doesn't have quite enough damage to be just kind of like a standalone, right? You're really going to want to like weakening curse first and then pick things off with shadow bolt, which works relatively well. Lightning is extremely good. To the point where, I mean, if I'm putting Dagger up here, I'll put it at the bottom of A tier. That'll probably make some people happy or at least less angry. All right. On to the two-handed sword. Slash. Hits two, four, two, relatively high damage, three uses per turn. Oh, Slash. If ever there was an ability of damage that belonged in the bottom tier, I think it's, I think it's Slash. It, that's just a, it's a rough ability. Uh, has very little going for it, uh, is very expensive to utilize. If you're using slashes with a two-handed sword, you're in trouble. Thrust, on the other hand, because of the high base damage of the sword, has some good uh, some good value to it, which I like put it maybe up here in like the backstab space. The fact that it's limited to two per turn is really the the rough part of this particular ability. Charge had its mana cost increased, which has hurt it a little bit, but I still think it's hitting very hard. It's a maneuver, so you're moving around a lot with it. At 1, 2, 1, I put it, I put it up here with like Dagger Throw. I think it's in the A tier, it's good, but it's basically the only redeeming quality of the sword in my book. And then we have Sword Blast. Uh, I still remember the first time I think I saw Jorbs talking about it. He was like, I don't think Swords Blast. I tend to agree with him. Uh, I think that Sword Blast lives in this, like, Fire Thrower, Grape Shot Blast. Like, I'm not really excited to be using this ability. It is, it is relatively cheap. So it has that going for it. And six packs are easier to find than a lot of other ones. But the sword is in a rough place from my perspective. And so as a result, I'm going to put it down here with the hammer because some, some things just have to go down here. Uh, it's just the way the cookie crumbles, for lack of a better uh, metaphor. The wand is our final weapon. Uh, sword of Damocles uh, got a nice little, a nice little extra bump from it being undodgeable, but its base damage is pretty darn low. I think I put it at the top of B tier. It is, it is a bit underwhelming. It doesn't do quite enough damage. The undodgeable is nice, but it's, uh, it's not great. And also its range is kind of middling. Then we have Transfer. Transfer is a hard one to rate just because there's a lot of utility that comes out of it. The, the skill ceiling of getting the damage mod is pretty nice, is pretty hard to do, but you do get more movement that scales up as it levels up. I think I put transfer like mid, mid A tier. Like it's not quite as good as stunning entrance. It's not quite as good as entangle. Maybe it's like over here with leap. That feels pretty reasonable. And then we have magic missiles. Uh, basically just a big multi-hit. Uh, for 2 AP and 4 mana. If you have Mana Collector, it's going to be recouping it. I think that this one lives up here with, uh, with the goats of, uh, of multi-hit. And, and then overall for Wand, it's, it's just it's my go-to crit build multi-hit, and I think it performs admirably. I think perhaps as a as a shocker, I'm gonna put it top of A tier. It's really, really good. It uh it does a lot of great work, but I, I am a little hard pressed to put it in S tier because you're really only taking it for magic missiles. And you could probably do something similar with spear in the B tier and you know, like take advantage of flurry strikes as an example. But, but yeah, I think that right there is my tier list. Uh, there's certainly some controversial things. I'm super excited to hear what you think. Where did I go right? Where did I go wrong? What mistakes did I make? What, uh, what choices would you not have made? What are the sleeper abilities that I should be utilizing more? Uh, let me hear from all those, uh, 
primary attack on the two-handed sword folks who are like, it's the best ability in the game. Two AP to hit two targets and not kill either of them. It's amazing. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for me. If you like this type of content, uh, please toss me a subscription and a like. It helps out more than you can possibly know. And uh, yeah, other than that, we'll be doing more of these as we go. Got more guide content in the, uh, in the hopper. But uh, I, I like making these. I like the conversations that come from them. So thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>